everyone, Steve from Backcountry Gallery here. I'm actually coming to you from the Blue Ridge Parkway. We're at a nice little overlook near the Smoky Mountains. And I thought this would make a nice backdrop for a discussion about the DSLR to mirrorless transition for wildlife photography that I know many people are considering. Now, in my last video, I happened to have my Sony gear with me and it generated more than a few comments asking if I was switching to Sony and more to the point, if the questioner should switch to Sony or another mirrorless system from their DSLRs. In fact, that's a question I've been getting like multiple times a day, every day lately. There seems to be like a lot of pent up anxiety out there about going from DSLR to mirrorless and which mirrorless system to move to and when. So in this video, let's just chat about that. First, keep in mind that just because mirrorless is getting all the attention at the moment, that doesn't mean your DSLR has stopped working. DSLRs are still just as capable of getting great shots today as they were before mirrorless cameras like the Canon R5 and the Sony A1 were introduced. And I think that's the root of the anxiety I sense out there about this. People are worried they're somehow getting left behind if they don't run out and buy a mirrorless body right now. And that's simply not the case. As I like to say, I believe in the 84 rule. 80% of a great image comes from four inches behind the viewfinder. In short, while a mirrorless camera may help you get better images and overcome some DSLR limitations, for more experienced shooters, you're really not looking at a night and day difference here in final output. Sure, in some cases it'll help. There's no question that the technology gives us options we didn't have with DSLRs. But don't kid yourself, great images are still gonna come from you, not the gear. In fact, I highly recommend you check out my article, Does Gear Matter? The Three Pillars of a Great Image. I think it covers a lot of this kind of ground and puts gear, technique, and artistic intent into perspective. Also, throughout the rest of this video, I'm going to drop images in from DSLRs and mirrorless cameras, see if you can guess which is which or if you can even tell a difference. Now still, depending on what you shoot, a mirrorless body can help you get a shot in ways a DSLR can't. Things like AF all over the frame, better tracking, animal and bird eye AF, crazy fast frame rates, no AF fine tuning, live exposure information, silent shutter, and on some cameras, even blackout free shooting can make a difference. There's really no question about that at all. In fact, if applying some or all of the advantages mirrorless adds to the equation can help you achieve a higher keeper rate and possibly better images, then a switch is incredibly compelling, especially when you combine it with all the hype out there. It's kind of irresistible. In addition, there's no question that all the best technology is going to be for mirrorless cameras now, and it's highly unlikely we're going to see any DSLR breakthroughs in our future. However, we're still in a very transitional place. We're just getting to the point where the best mirrorless cameras are overtaking the best DSLRs for performance and flexibility. However, no mirrorless system is really complete yet. In fact, when it comes to mirrorless cameras from the big three that can take on the best action DSLRs we have out there, the pickings are actually pretty slim. Sony has the A9 series as well as the A1, Canon has the R5 and 6 and the upcoming R3, and while the Nikon Z series is really great for some things, they're still kind of stuck at the starting line compared to Nikon's higher end DSLRs, at least probably until the Z9 comes out. We also have a native lens problem with all three companies. As of this video, Nikon doesn't have any native lenses over 200 millimeter. Canon has the 100 to 500, although at 500 millimeter you're facing a tiny f7.1 aperture. Canon also has the new 400 28 and 600 f4 that seem like permanently adapted versions of their EF lenses. I think Sony is treating wildlife photographers a little better with their 100 to 400, 200 to 600, 400 to 8, and 600 f4. However, even Sony is still missing major optics like a 300 to 8, a 300 f4, 500 f4, 800 5.6 and a fast f4 zoom in the 200 to 400 range. At least with Nikon and Canon though, we have access to those lenses with our adapters. Now sure, there are lens roadmaps from some companies, but those seem heavy on promises, but kind of light on actual availability dates. So nothing is perfect and nothing is complete. And that's really the issue and why so many are struggling with this decision. Right now, we have no way to know exactly which system will work out best for wildlife photography. It's like playing Russian roulette with your photographic finances. So we have two choices, wait and see or roll the dice. 
For me, it was kind of a forced dice roll. Since I output so much Nikon material in the form of books, videos, and educational materials, I couldn't afford to ignore the Z cameras. So I invested in the Zs and have been using them. I quickly discovered that I really liked the idea of mirrorless, just not how Nikon was implementing it in the Z cameras for action work. So I tried to use DSLRs whenever I was facing faster action, but once you get used to things like having AF all over the viewfinder, it becomes a bit infuriating when you're limited to just essential aerial full frame DSLR, and of course, there's more to it than that, but it wasn't long before I was looking at the Sony A9 series. They brought everything I liked about mirrorless into a high-performance camera that met my needs. So now I shoot both systems, and very happily, I might add. And you know what? Even now, I can't tell you if switching to Sony is a good idea for a Nikon shooter. The thing is, it's entirely possible a firmware update or a new camera like the Z9 will catapult Nikon into the lead position. I think they may have another D3 moment in their future. And of course, you can't forget about Canon. The new R3 looks great, and there's little doubt it's going to break a lot of new ground. However, which company is going to come out on top for wildlife photographers is still up for grabs. We simply can't see the future. Of course, in a few years, cooler heads may conclude that any of the big three brands are just fine for wildlife photography, and in fact, I have a feeling that's exactly where all of this is going to land. I think any company that still wants to be around in three years has little choice but to keep up with the others. With all the uncertainty out there, I think the best advice right now is to really take a hard look at just how much mirrorless will help your photography. Are you looking at it because it's new and shiny, or because there are real benefits you can leverage right now, today? If you can't easily list real concrete reasons why mirrorless will help you with your photography, it's best to hold off. A good question to ask is what problem does this solve for me? If you have answers to those questions, switching now may make sense. At the same time, I also think the people who wait are the ones risking the least. Not to mention, they're avoiding some of the bleeding edge technology headaches that come up too. So if mirrorless would bring real, tangible benefits to your photography and you don't want to wait, I think the best approach is to buy into the system that's as close as possible to what you ultimately want. While I appreciate that good stuff is coming soon, I'd rather have a real camera and lens in hand than one that's vaporware at the moment with no set release date. If you need it now, go with the system that will work right now. That's why I'm shooting Sony most days, at least at the time of this recording. For me, Nikon is offering gear that's coming soon, while Sony is offering gear I can use right now today. And again, in six months, this may radically change, and I do understand that, and I hope you do as well. Also, keep in mind that if you're using Nikon or Canon at the moment, switching to another system may seem like a harder choice. After all, you can adapt your current lenses to the new mirrorless camera. And if that brand seems like it's going to work for you in the future, that's a valid pathway, and I hope you pursue it. However, also just consider this, a little food for thought. As I've shot my Nikon Z cameras, I found myself replacing my F mount glass with native Z mount glass. Not only is it a step up optically, thanks in part to the new lens mount, but those lenses are better designed to be used with mirrorless. Native glass includes features like function rings and buttons that aren't necessarily found on legacy DSLR glass. So, while I think most people going to mirrorless may start with adapted glass, I'll bet most end up with native glass in the end. This means you're going to replace all your lenses anyway. If that's the case, going to a new system is an easier decision. If you have to start over, you should look at all your options and pick the one that's best for you now, not necessarily the one you, you're locked into because you purchased a DSLR 10 years ago in a specific lens mount. Now is a rare opportunity to start over. Of course, if you have really pricey optics, adapted glass for a few years may make a lot of sense as you transition, but you know what, I just wanted to give you some food for thought there. Again though, the bottom line is that no one knows for sure how all of this will shake out, and I think the patient will see rewards in the form of more complete, mature systems with a wide variety of optics at their disposal, plus if you're patient, you can see which of the big three systems evolves into what suits your needs the best, rather than investing heavily in one system and then having to switch to another because your early choice was wrong. In short, it may be cheaper to hold off if you don't have a pressing need for mirrorless right this second. Finally, remember if you shoot Nikon, either DSLR or mirrorless, to check out my ebooks, Secrets to the Nikon Autofocus System, and Secrets to Exposure and Metering for Nikon. Both books include hundreds of pages of information, but more importantly, they are also jam packed with advice for leveraging everything you're learning 
in the field. And of course, it's all written in a fun, easy to understand, non-technical way. You spent thousands on your gear, it's time to get the most out of it. Also, make sure you stop by the site and sign up for my free email newsletter so you never miss a video, article, workshop opportunity, or announcement. Also, if you have a photography question, drop by the BCG forums, friendliest photography forums on the internet. Tons of helpful people and great advice. Finally, remember to like, subscribe, and get notified. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.